Time now for a Left of Lansing Monday musing for this August 19th of 2024. A few weeks ago, I talked about the MAGA fake populism ploy in which MAGA Republicans pose themselves as sticking up for the working class of the country, when in reality, they only stick up for the rich donor class, you know, their crowd. We've seen that plain as day right here in Michigan as MAGA Republicans are demanding that Democrats join them in rolling back minimum wage and earn paid sick leave laws scheduled to take effect this coming winter thanks to a state Supreme Court ruling. Not only did MAGA Republicans break the law, according to the court, by gutting those initiatives some six years ago, but MAGA Republicans are promising to gut them again if they get back into power. Well, on the national level, we're seeing MAGA Republicans aided and abetted by the corporate media elites cry and complain over Vice President Kamala Harris's smart and populist economic agenda as the Democratic National Convention begins here in Chicago this week. Harris unveiled her main economic policy goals in North Carolina last week, and wow! Did she make some noise that is sending shockwaves throughout the corporate media world? Because, you see, her agenda is receiving a ringing endorsement from the American people after she outlined a true progressive, populist, and pro-worker and pro-family agenda. Kamala Harris even exceeded my expectations as she called for an extension of the child tax credit, which was an extremely popular and successful program that wiped out half of the nation's child poverty in the one year it was implemented around the pandemic. But now Harris is calling for $6,000 for low-income and middle-class families who are having a baby and a restoration of the $3,600 child tax credit from the pandemic era. I mean, it's not only a smart political move by Harris, but it's also a moral move. It's a pro-life move. And let's see if Dear Leader and J.V. Vance are as pro-life as they claim. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, Vance recently called for a $5,000 extension to the child tax credit. But of course, when he had a chance to actually reinstate the child tax credit in the Senate, he was too busy to show up to vote for it. Harris also did something else that stunned me. She not only wants to give homeowners $25,000 towards their first down payments of their first house, but she is also calling for 3 million new housing units in her first term. Look, we've seen so much nimbyism in our country, and it's not working on the state and local level. Not at all. Sure, a house is the best way a family can accumulate wealth. But as we saw with the housing bubble burst of 2008, the current system of Wall Street getting involved in the housing market gain combined with nimbyism is not working. To lower prices, we need more affordable houses and less Wall Street influence and less nimbyism. On top of that, Harris is calling for a crackdown on corporate price gouging, which caused the greedflation we've witnessed here in our country, even as inflation is now getting more under control. And she's calling for caps on insulin for all Americans, not just those for on Medicare. Now, of course, Harris has received the endorsements from unions, including the UAW, and her selection of Minnesota Governor Tim Walls as her running mate is another signal of Kamala's popular strategy since Walls passed paid sick leave, free meals at schools, and more. And what I'm loving more, though, is seeing the MAGA meltdown. I mean, I can't believe how Harris has tricked them into calling for and defending for more corporate price gouging. We want more price gouging. We want more price gouging. Makes for a hell of a bumper sticker. I mean, I can't believe believe calling for an extension of the pro-life child tax credit and affordable housing is now suddenly communism to the MAGA crowd. She and Waltz have put dear leader Vance, MAGA, and the entire corporate media establishment in panic mode because they have the political smarts and guts to propose policies, popular policies, for the people. That's why you're seeing the very serious media types running around yelling, how's she gonna pay for it? How's she gonna pay for it? How's she gonna pay for it? Well, they never seem to echo the same sentiments or hold on to the same how are they going to pay for it standards when it comes to billions of dollars in giveaways to corporations or billionaire tax breaks for tech bros or wasteful defense department spending or shoveling billions overseas for wars or how the gutting of environmental protections ends up costing us more in the end. No, 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 no. You never hear them question that. It's only when someone proposes popular policies that'll help normal, everyday, hardworking Americans that corporate media figures demand man suddenly to know how they'll be paid for, failing to realize how the return on investment of these plans will benefit everyone, including the business community, more than trickle-down economics has ever done. So, There's Harris, Walls, and the Democrats pushing a strong populist message versus the fake populism of Dear Leader and MAGA. It's an easy choice to make. And how do you know Harris is on the right side of this? Just judge from the corporate media freakout. Always follow the money.
Left of Lansing at gmail.com is the best way to reach me. Subscribe to the podcast and also subscribe to Left of Lansing on YouTube. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, the Gram, and Facebook. Take the battle to them. <laughs>